This is Andy Purwell for Boxing Social in association with Betfred, and I'm joined by Al Siesta over in Russia. Al, how are you doing? I'm very well, bro. Very well, as you can see. Enjoying myself, making fights, and practicing Russian billiards. So it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> no, you're in good spirits. Obviously, it looks like you're in a brilliant pla pla place, as we can see there. Um, one big fight to start off with, we saw announced earlier, Liam Smith versus Magomed Kurbanov. Talk to me about that and your involvement in it, Al. Yes, it's been on the cards for a few weeks, almost two months, I'd say. Basically, what it was, I thought that Magomed Kobanov needs a real test and he's been moaning that he's being undermatched and all his opponents won't on the level. So I said, I can bring you someone very, very special. First of all, if you're willing to pay, speak to your promoter. And he said, listen, the money are there, just deliver something special. And I uh, spoke to Liam Smith. Liam said, I'm very interested. I said, Liam, you see, in order for us to do any negotiations, Ultimately, we need to be on the same page. You need to be wanting this fight. There's no reason for me to try and to speak to your management and promotion team and everyone. If you don't want this fight, we're going to waste everyone's time. Liam said, Al, oh, you know me for a long time. I'm ready and I'm going to bang your boy out. So it was easy for me. I just went to MTK, the management of Liam Smith, match on boxing, we spoke, we negotiated, came on the same page very quickly, very straightforward. It's just a lengthy contract and so on and so forth. That's why it took so much time. But the fight was done really quickly and we're here. It's announced. It's brilliant. Talk to me about the fight, Al, because it's, it's received a, a great kind of a great form of recognition from people who know about Magomed as well. Certainly over in the UK, a lot of people excited about it and see the potential dangers there for Liam. But talk to me about the fight. Man, this matchmaker's dream. This fight is unbelievable. Both guys, top five WBO. The winner will probably progress and fight in the final eliminator against Team Du, the son of legendary Costa Du. So it's a big fight. It's a huge fight for Russia, for UK, for I think for Europe and for entire world because both guys are in contention. Kurbanov is a bit of an animal. And Liam is really, really tested guy. Gave Canelo, arguably, one of the hardest fights Canelo had. I reckon, apart from those he lost, but Liam came to fight against Canelo. People like Lara and so on and so forth, they were like ducking and diving, surviving. Typical awkward South Park kind of behavior in the ring, where Liam absolutely brought it all to Canelo. And that's what I'm expecting in that fight against Magomed Korbanov. And Korbanov is not shying away either. So we're there for an absolute fireworks, I can tell you that. I'm scared to think about this fight. That's how explosive it is. Were there any obstacles to overcome with this fight with regards to potential opponents for Liam? Because I know for a while, a bout between Liam Smith and Jesse Vargas has been spoken about. Was there anything in the background going on with Liam that made this a bit more of a complicated deal to get sorted and over the line? It's not really because uh, Jesse Vargas and Liam, it was cooking for a long time, but it was a bit of obscurity about this. And when I said to Eddie Hearn, there's a fight like this on the, on, on the cards, he said, let's go. It's brilliant, brilliant. Because look, the winner of this fight, they can fight. Do Vargas, you name it, anybody. So this fight is huge. And it's also, is dedicated to V-Day because as you remember, I'm not sure if we haven't erased this date from the memory, recent memory. The 9th of May, 8th of May, is actually uh, a day of capitulation of a Nazi Germany, if you remember, on the Second World War in 1945. And Russians celebrate, because it's a big, big thing to us. We lost 20 million people in that war, you know? And we do celebrate every 8th, 9th of May. And this fight came exactly on the day. So, and it, and it called something like your victory day or something like that, you know? So there you go. We've got it, man. It's done, it's signed, it's sealed and delivered. And all we need to do in God's willing, both fighters are in camp, no injuries, nothing. Comes 8th of May, we'll experience something very, very special and quite violent, I can tell you that. 
<laughs> oh, what will be the deal with regards to kind of the television networks that will look to show this fight, et cetera, over in the UK? Yeah, there are a few big players on the cards at the moment. There's negotiation continuing, obviously, all parties involved. I've got a rough idea where we will be airing that, but just in case I will be wrong, I'm not jinxing anything anymore. So let's patiently wait. Very soon we will have the announcement and we will have that major network that will be showing in that fight. Oh, Liam, travelling out there as the away fighter, did he express any concerns to you about the fact he will be the away fighter? Man, let me tell you that. I'm saying to Liam, yeah, I need to finalise as a 10 round or 12 round. If he goes, that makes no difference. No one going that far. <laughs> this is his words. Absolutely, man. I love Liam Smith. Absolute true, true warrior throwback proper. These are the fighters I love working with. I don't like all this waffling around and all oh, home fights. Oh, we go. Liam said, I want this boy. I want your boy. I'll deal with him. Give it to me. That's it. It was played. I put telephone down. I thought, this is the kind of deal I like. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'll move forward. Um, just touch oh. on a few of things. Touch on your fighters. Zach Chelly, what is going on with Zach? Zach is good. We are just about to announce the fight. I didn't want to, I didn't really want you to ask that, but as, as, <laughs> as you're asking, there's a very big fight cooking for him uh, again in the Lions Den, which is kind of on my show, which is not really Lions Den because Zach will be a home fighter. But few announcements coming, as I tweeted recently, there are a few announcements that are pending and they will be coming in due course. Very exciting. So Please give it to me, to my discretion, to air it very soon for the boxing fans and just let me indulge myself because I've been working really hard here um, in just outside of Moscow in CS the Boxing headquarters. We've got this brilliant uh, billiards table. I'm practicing my, my shots and making fights. That's all I'm doing, eating and sleeping and seeing my parents periodically. Um, I'll also, Shaquille Thompson, what is going on with Shaquille? Same thing, leave it with me. Something uh -huh. very special is coming. <laughs> I'll take it the same will be said for John Doherty. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Man, how can I forget about my boys? Come on. You know it. That's one thing um, we didn't get a chance to speak on last time we spoke. John Doc linking up with Grant Smith. Talk to me about that move and their work together. Man, they gel fantastically well. And I thought this is probably one of the best character gelling uh, which I facilitated because John has a fire. He's a Scottish man. He's that one of a kind in terms of very aggressive, very aggressive. I'm going to kill you right there and then. And Grant is pragmatic technician and they gel fantastically well because Grant brought all those sites that John had during amateur days, which he completely neglected because he's been putting everyone out so easily, obviously, apart from underperforming against Jack Cullen. But Grant kind of uh, recalled that memories from John and they realizing how good actually John is as a boxer as well. So I'm really, really delighted. It's a perfect combination. And I'm really looking forward to see the harvesting from Grant Smith's work and John's gr grind. So uh, comes, I'd say, early May, because they're working, work in progress. John picking up a great shape. I saw some pictures. Uh, I should have been tweeting that, actually, you know, but I've been working here so hard, and you know, speaking Russian every day, continuously. So my Vs turn into Ws, and Ws turning gradually to V. So let's go to work. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's, I end up being like that eventually. So that's the situation. But overall, man, I'm really delighted. And everything's on the cards for Zach Chelly, John Doherty, Shaquille Thompson, and Levi Smith, of course. There's another, another signing we had. Uh, and um, he's traveling between Europe and the UK, goes to Ireland, Belgium, sparring camps, working with Roger Sampson. So everything is brilliant, man. He's only a young man, and he's got a long way to go. But we are excited about him as well. You know, oh, just two fights. I want to get your thoughts on, or two kind of things we're waiting to see what will happen with. We saw an announcement probably about half an hour ago. AJ and Fury have apparently signed for a two fight deal, however, waiting on kind of a site and a date with that in mind. Just your thoughts on that announcement. What do you make of it? Listen, in order for us to progress with Usyk against Joe Joyce, 
we need to see the signed contract between Joshua and Tyson Fury. If that deal is signed, we can speak to the WBO and see what's happening with uh, Usyk against Joyce, because at the moment, still a pie in the sky, very tasty one, and you can almost touch it, but let's see if it's materialized. If it's materializing, massive congrats to everyone in the world, by the way. So let's see, let's see. What do they say? We believe it when we see it. So that's, that's the thing, but otherwise I'm really pleased and I can't wait. What's the second fight? Um, Usyk, Joyce, I was going to ask you for your, your words and your off There you go. Because yeah, 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 yeah. It's not happening whilst champion still unemployed, if you know what I mean. Yeah, he has to be fighting Tyson Fury because if there's no Tyson Fury, there's an Alexander Usyk in line, 100%. There's no one else but Usyk. What did you make of? Um, I saw Alex Krashak did an interview uh, a couple of days ago. And so, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go through that again. Alex, who? Alex Krasiuk. Alex Krasuk. Good. <laughs> let's let's speak with Russian accent. Alex Krasuk. I don't think I can get the R's to roll like that. <laughs> listen, listen. Your Bromi accent is so drastic. You can say anything. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, like I said, just yeah. to jump out. Uh, so I listened to the other day where mm. he said that they hadn't actually had talks with regards to a potential Joyce and Usyk about just your knowledge on kind of what has gone on there and where things did stand prior to the whole AJ Fury situation. Man, Alex Krasuk, a still legitimate legal promoter of Alexander Usyk, at least for one fight. So whatever happens next, Alex Krasik will be a promotion company representing Alexander Usyk. Whatever's go on afterwards, that's technicality and legal logistics and decision of Alexander Usyk, Alex Krasik. At the moment, they are all the same team. Egis Klimas, Alex Krasik, Alexander Usyk, they are, are all on the same page. All everyone waiting is Joshua Fury. And depends on that fight, there's big momentum and there's lots of directions to take, but everyone will probably think about an interim title against Joe Joyce. And that's when the real negotiations will become. That's when might be Pearl's bits. Maybe we will agree earlier. I'm saying we, I'm a little bit involved in some certain capacity. And um, so, which is very important for us, you know? I'm, I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing because during this crazy pandemic times, we're trying to work so hard and boxing is just is getting up on his feet again, on its feet, for some reason. But I'd say boxing is masculine, so he is. Right, Al. We Women forgive me. <laughs> and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the episode. <laughs> it's evening time over there. But for everybody who's following you, for everybody who adores you, Al, and your growing fan base, what would you like to say to everyone? Man, I'm not sure if there's people that adore me. There, I'm not, there aren't actually that many haters because I'm a nice guy, I know. <laughs> Listen. Al Siesta, Instagram, just type Al Siesta. There's only one and only, yeah? Same as, uh, I think, Twitter, Facebook. Please don't forget to follow Siesta Boxing Promotions and siestaboxing.ru, which is our Russian branch, because I actually have now a company represented in Russia and doing all my kind of legals with television, with sponsorships, broadcasters, and all that stuff. So it's brilliant. We are growing, hopefully one day, a big UK deal is coming and we're going to national and we're going to make a real difference. Trust me. Can't wait and buzzing. Love you all. Oh, thank you for your time. Stay safe. Speak to you soon. Likewise, brother. Thank you.